So we talk about sustainability. Um, a lot of times we end up talking about things like setting an EUI target or reducing your carbon footprint. But we really need to um, reframe the conversation and talk about sustainability um, in terms of the communities where people are living and working. We need to talk about sustainability in terms of social and economic opportunities, in terms of basic human rights, and in terms of preserving cultures. A lot of times when we talk about public interest design projects, especially ones that are in third world countries, the sustainability conversation looks a lot different than it would in a traditional United States project, say. You know, in a, in a traditional U.S. project, we would talk about things like, do we want to pay more um, upfront for expensive mechanical systems in, in the hopes that we, it would offset some of our operational um, utility usage once the building's operational. Um, but that conversation looks a lot different when we're talking about projects where um, we can't assume that there's, there's infrastructure to provide electricity and provide water to a site. At that point, the conversation starts to look like, how do we maximize daylight? Or how do we capture breezes? How do we harvest rainwater? Uh, and sustainability really becomes mandatory at that point, and it's a design driver and not something that's just um, desired by a client. We talk a lot about the triple bottom line, and, and historically, as an industry, we've defined our success based on um, the component that is profit. In the last 10 years or so, I'd say that that has shifted um, to include the planet and, and sustainability as we know it by its traditional term. But we really haven't shifted our focus so much to encompass the third component, which is people. And, and the goal of Citizen HKS is really to address that and to really start to think about defining success in terms of helping people and making a way of life sustainable.